guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here with a weekly wrap up. And I got a lot of books read this week, so I'm just gonna go straight on into what I was reading. The first book I read was actually on my Kindle and was called The Red Word by Sarah Hestra. And this is a book that's set in 1995 and it's about a young college girl called Karen. She's, I think, in her second year of college. Um, and she becomes roommates with this other gang of girls who are all um, feminist and most of them are queer as well and they are on this kind of um, rampage against this frat house on the campus um, and Karen kind of is involved with it and kind of not involved with it because while she's also a feminist and she's very much into like women's studies and stuff like this and um, she's also dating a guy from this frat house um, and kind of goes to their parties and um, socializes with them a lot so knows a lot of the boys in this frat house she's also quite attracted to this other guy in the frat house who is not like her boyfriend but is kind of like the golden boy i guess of the frat house and um, whose name is bruce and she has this like really kind of flirty relationship with him but i'll kind of get more into that um later on but yeah we're kind of seeing Karen stuck in this place in between these two and her trying to deal with her roommates while also trying to be involved with this frat house and it's just a really really interesting look at um kind of patriarchy and um sexism towards women and the culture of kind of um rape culture I guess um in college campuses as well and kind of sexual violence against women and how it's kind of perpetrated um, a lot by these fraternities and how it's normalised as well um, and it was really really interesting there's definitely bits in this book that will make you really really mad just the way the boys treat the women and the way the parties like like it's just there's so much sexism in it um, and it does make you feel a little bit sick to your stomach um, while at the same time even though this is all going on you can still also understand Karen's kind of her desire to still fit into all of it even though she is you know she doesn't agree with what they're doing but she's also kind of frustrating as well because there's a lot of times that she could speak up against what they're doing and she doesn't there are some things that go to extremes in this case um like just some things that the her roommates do to try and bring the actions of the frat house out into the light um there's some things that they do that it's really really problematic and i obviously do not agree with at all but you can see kind of the way feminism can gear into that horrible feminazi way which i hate the word i hate the whole terms of feminazis and the way they're thought about but you can see the way it can sometimes just evolve people's people's fight to try and try and do better they can end up getting themselves into something that is just so extreme and it ends up kind of barrel rolling out of their control some bits in this that I really really loved I just I, I did love as I said Karen's struggle between the two because you can really really understand that you and then she also had this really weird lovely relationship as I said with this frat boy called Bruce and it was like they would just meet in the bathroom like in the mornings after these parties would happen and they wouldn't do anything they wouldn't kiss they wouldn't like have sex or anything but they just kind of like hold each other and hug each other or like slow dance in the middle of the bathroom and it was just so beautiful and so sensuous and like I just really really fancied Bruce as well like from this and like she was kind of being told by like that he was the worst of the worst because he was like the golden boy he was like the ultimate frat boy while at the same time like a lot of the stuff there's some stuff he does that is definitely problematic but he's definitely not the worst one but at the same time you could totally like you would be like well for like myself as a reader i would be like i would probably date him or i probably definitely fancy him um and i could totally get why karen had this really strong attraction towards him and strong feelings towards him. end of this did go a little bit like batch of crazy for me and um, some stuff happened that was i was just like whoa what the hell um and there is also kind of this weird like most of the story is told in 95 and i will say as well that a lot of the stuff that the girls are fighting against um in this campus in 1995 is stuff that we're still fighting today which is so annoying so there's times that you would read it that you would actually think that it is happening today and um, there's not that much that differentiates it but uh, there is also kind of this um timeline that is told in the future when she is like a little bit older and it's like it's almost like I think like 2016 or 2017 I think um and I didn't really find that necessary I didn't think that we really needed those bits and um, I didn't really care about them I only cared about the 1995 bits um so yeah so I gave this a four stars um overall I did really really enjoy it next book I read was Age of Myth by Michael J Sullivan um, and this is the um first book in his what is called the Legends of the First Empire and he Michael J Sullivan has the Ryeria Chronicles books um, and I think this is set like 3,000 years or something before the Ryeria Chronicles so I think it is technically set in the same world but you don't have to have read the Ryeria Chronicles to have read this which is good because I have not read the Ryeria Chronicles yet I loved this book this just was so good it was just 
this is like about um this land where are, there are these like human people like just us who are just trying to survive and then there's this other part of the land that is controlled by these people they call the Freak. so they're kind of like they're long they're almost like elves in a way they're like really really long living some of them have magic and um, they're stronger they're just better they're faster um and they kind of control um the the other people who they call runes and um they're really really scary the runes think of these fray as gods and they think they are untouchable and unkillable and then one guy one day this guy kills a fray and he becomes known as the god killer and it kind of just ends up sparking this spiral of action after this act he does ends up killing one of the fray there are just there's just a lot of stuff going on in this book but at the same time it is so easy to read i just thought the writing in this was just so you could just flow through it like it was just so easy to speed through the book it wasn't like really heavy a parts the way some fantasy can be it was just so understandable um and yeah i just really really enjoyed it um i don't want to really say too much about it because i think it's one of those ones that just works like when you don't really know, know much because that's the way I went into it. Um, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars because I just enjoyed every single second of it. I loved it. Next book I finished was Bygone Badass Broads um, by Mackenzie Lee and this is just an anthology of um, stories about all these amazing women in history um, and a lot of them are diverse women, uh, women of colour um, and they are just so cool. Um, I loved this book again another five star read for me and um, I loved every single story like literally every single one of these women was just fascinating and had amazing story I literally want an historical novel written about every single one of these women because I would read all of them in a quick minute the illustrations in this book are just really really good as well this lady here was actually one of my favorites you can see her really cool strong um illustration there um but like literally all of them are just really really nice um yeah I cannot recommend this book enough it's absolutely brilliant I read it over a few days like I read four or five stories um every day and I just really enjoyed doing it that way as well but oh this is just so good next book I read was From A Low and Quiet Sea by Donald Ryan which was like kind of sparked my first read for the Irish readathon um and this book is out at the end of March I think some point in March um and I got this uh, in exchange for an honest review from Penguin Ireland um and this is kind of as you can see it's a shorter novel it's only about 190 pages this book follows three different men um they're all kind of going through different things there is Farouk who is a Syrian refugee and his story is kind of showing his um his decision to leave Syria and the travel he has to make to uh, get to another country and is you know the kind of type of trip that a lot of Syrian refugees make across the water it's very very dangerous um, and Farouk is kind of dealing with the despair and grief um, of that trip and some of the consequences of that trip. There is Lampy who is about 23 years old and he's dealing with um, a heartbreak that has really affected him and um, kind of being stuck in that point where he didn't really go he didn't go to college and um, he's kind of stuck in this job um which he doesn't mind but like he's not really going anywhere with it and he has a lot of anger issues as well he doesn't have a dad around and um, he only has his mom and his grandpa and yeah he is just dealing with all these thoughts about like where the hell he's going and should he just end it all and like what is his life really worth kind of thing um, and then there is John who is an older man and he's kind of at the end of his life and thinking about all the very very bad things he did in his life he was not a very nice man um, and he's kind of it's, he's kind of his chapters are kind of where he's doing like a last confession kind of thing and he's talking about the different things he did and how he kind of seems to regret it now um, and we don't really know how all these men are connected but it kind of comes together in like the last few pages really um, I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed Always Shall Know, um, which was this book I think was out last year, which I adored. I really, really loved that one. Um, this one wasn't as hard hitting or I didn't like, I didn't engage with the story as much, but I think it's because these stories seemed quite separate at first until the very last few pages where they all kind of suddenly inter interconnected. Um, they're all really like Farouk not so much but Lampy and John are quite unlikable characters at times um, and all of the characters including Farouk they all kind of say these things now and again and have uh, these actions normally towards women where you actually kind of take a step back and you're like whoa did he say that or did he actually do that or did he think about doing that and it does make you like they're like they're not that likable characters they're not characters that you fall in love with and um, they're all quite flawed and quite raw and do these things that do make you feel uncomfortable um but I did really enjoy a lot of their thoughts and feelings and stuff. Um, I think the character I connect with most was probably Lampy just because he was the nearest in age to me and being an Irish 20 something millennial and dealing with kind of, you know, those college questions and what should I do now and that kind of 
point where you're in your life and you're kind of like oh god like what next um I just I did quite relate to that a lot um and I did enjoy kind of some of his interactions he kind of drives the bus around with kind of the elderly and I did enjoy some of his interactions um with them where it's quite sweet and quite nice and um, but again he does say some stuff about an ex-girlfriend and has some actions towards an ex-girlfriend that are quite problematic um but yeah, so I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars because it was not my favourite, but I was going to give it a 3 stars and the end happened and I was like, oh, that was done really, really well. So yeah, so I, gave, I ended up bumping to 3.5. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it. I just didn't love it, but I'm very glad I read it. The next book I finished, I read uh, through the readathon by Zoe, which was the 24 hour readathon. Um, I didn't quite read the 24 hours, but I did get a few books read during it. One of them was this tiny little book, which is um, Irish Legends for Children. As you can see, it's absolutely tiny. It's on like 60 pages. And when I say 60 pages, I mean like the pages, there's only that much writing on them. So there's like nothing really to read here. But um, I've had this book since I was a kid. This is one of my favourite books from when I was a child. And as I said, it is literally just Irish legends for children. It's like the giant, the legend around the giant's causeway, um, the bull of Cooley, the, the brown bull of Cooley, um, the beggarman, Oisin. Uh, so I just really enjoyed it. It was just really fun to read. I haven't read it actually in like years. So I really enjoyed just picking it up and speeding through us was really really nice and um, gave it a five out of five stars obviously because i loved it the next book i finished was dublin urban legends um by brandon nolan and this was a book i was really big to speed through it was 190 pages um th i gave this three out of five stars just because i enjoyed some of the stories some of them were funny others i didn't really care about um i just didn't find this really spectacular um so yeah there was i am to be honest like some of these i'm com wonder if they were made up because i haven't heard like any of these um, and some of them were like really weird and I was just like okay is he actually taking the piss and just making some of these up for the book like I don't know but uh yeah so three out of five stars it was just okay and the last book I finished this week was Kathleen Clark Revolutionary Woman um which was actually written completely by Kathleen Clark herself and it was edited by her grandniece Helen Lytton um Kathleen Clark was the wife of one of the leaders of the Irish Easter Rising um, and he was killed executed he wasn't killed he was executed um by british soldiers at the time for being a leader in this uh, rising and she kind of kept on the fight afterwards um and kind of kept things going and she actually in the 40s she became the first lady mayor of dublin um and so she was mayor in dublin during like world war ii and stuff and she was an active member of Sinn fein and fianna fall um uh, in the previous years before that and she was just a really really interesting woman and just learning about everything from her point of view like she's not really told in history books I cannot remember her name coming up in history books or anything about her yet she had so much to do with the not just not really the rising but stuff after the rising and coming up towards like um, the Irish Civil War and the Irish Free State and stuff like she had a lot of stuff to do there um, and she went through a terrible time she was arrested she was imprisoned and um, she was interrogated by British soldiers she was her house was raided again and again by British soldiers and then the black and tans and black and tans were like scum of the earth and did terrible terrible things um to her house to her family to her dogs um yeah they were just horrible people and she had to deal with them again and again and again and she kept strong and it just makes me mad that she wasn't mentioned in history books because she did do so much important things and it was just really annoying to be reading her and being like oh why what why don't I know her why haven't I known about her before this um really did really enjoy it I give some really really strong four out of five stars I also like that she mentioned she was in coming to bond which is like was like a women's group at the time um and she mentioned so many more women that were involved with coming to bond and in like the um rising and the uh, civil war and the fight against the Brits for Irish freedom um, and the Irish free state and stuff so she did mention a lot of these women who were also involved um, and were also not mentioned in history books so um, I really enjoyed that as well so yeah four to five stars really really enjoyed this and um, I do think that if you aren't Irish you probably wouldn't get much out of this one but if you are Irish or if you just have a really really big interest in Irish history and already know a little bit about it and um, particularly the um the 1916 Easter Rising and the years subsequent years following that up towards the treaty and the Irish Free State um, you would probably really really enjoy this um, so yeah this is everything I read this week which was quite a lot but we did have a Storm Emma and the Beast from the East and stuff so we were snowed in for a few days so I did have a lot of reading time um, so thank you guys so much, for, so much for watching please leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts and I'll see you guys again next time bye